And today we're going to be talking about product manufacturing information and, and not, you know, everybody, everybody assumes that these are just, you know, three dimensional, three dimensional dimensions that, that go into a model instead of onto a flat piece of paper. But there's so much more than that that we can offer. Obviously, dimensions and tolerances are, are critical, but we can annotate materials, specify uh, surfaces, help with uh, assembly, assembly or packaging details, even, uh, even final inspection. So all sorts of information can be added to that model and, and then filtered out so the right user gets that at the right time in, in your product life cycle. So that being said about the NX portfolio, how is it specific that PMI can be brought to bear um, on certain applications? And you know, there's a wealth of, of opportunity for that, not just with the associativity inside of NX, that, that's unparalleled in the industry, but to, to specifically bring PMI to, to use and to, to get some return on investment in that across your organization. Here we have a little slide that just talks about the model-based or, or the master model concept where everything is driven from that 3D model. You know, we, can, we can automatically create dimensions on 2D drawings. We can do uh, analysis of parts and, and create tooling from that automate manufacturing, uh, create CMM programs that, that are directly driven from the PMI and the gd &T that's that's associated with the model itself, just generate those programs automatically. And then we'll see how we can also share this information with not only internal customers, but also your, your suppliers and, and your own customers. We have a tool inside of NX in the draft environment called Convert to PMI. And here we can take the simple 2D dimensions, and even if they're in a, in a separate part of, a, of like a master model concept where we have the draft file on top, and I'll, I'll jump down right in here and show you. What we can do is bring that two-dimensional data and, and kind of backwards port it up into our part. So right here, what we have is this brake rotor where there's the draft file, and then the, the part model is, is a child to that, which is standard practice, which we like to say in Siemens master model concept. So let me just open up this part for you real quick so you can see, see what we're looking at and see that there isn't any PMI. This is where this would be stored here in the part navigator. There'd be another tab for PMI, and then we break it out and filter it by view. So right now there's there's none of that information here. We're going to we're going to generate it from the 2D draft and push it into the part file so that we can use it uh, as we'll talk about here today. So right here in drafting tools, we're going to convert to PMI. I've got them all updated. Everything's ready to go. I'm going to select sheet 1 and that's going to pull the views that are off of that. We could select uh, we could select just certain views if we wanted to, just the right or the top, but I'm going to grab the whole sheet and hit OK. I'm going to have it open that in our destination part. That's going to process here and, and push us back to our part model, just the same one that we were in. And there you can see right away, we've got some PMI that was, that was developed from those 2D dimensions, and it's filtered into the different views that it came from. So we can see, uh, we can see that incorporated right there, the top. And then even that uh, specifications table came in to, to the view that it was stored with. So we can send that downstream and, and make that uh, appear in, in those portable documents we talked about. So just to show you again, I mentioned there were two types uh, formats that we could go to with the, with the technical data package. One was the JT with PDF, and the other is a 3D PDF. So uh, much the same here. We'll just go ahead and create uh, a template. These are fully customizable. You'd, you'd want to go ahead and, and make your own templates. These are the out-of-the-box examples right now. And selected views. So here we're going to grab for this particular application or customer, I'm going to grab all of the things that apply 
for for this particular output that I, that I want to do right now. We so, can also start to populate, just real quick, we can also start to populate the title bar. We can attach, uh, we can attach versions of your common language file. Right now, everything's going to be held secure inside of the inside of this portable package. We can even password protect it, but uh, but we could also attach data if we wanted people to have the 3D models. Right now, it's 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 just for viewing inside. Sorry, what were you going to say, Chris? No, I was just going to say. So, I mean, another game changer, right? You're able to supply. You can be as granular as you want with the data based on leveraging the PM, PMI, you know, tab as you're showing the examples here of, right, if you're working with a supplier or you're working directly with a customer, right, you can be as granular or as high level as you need to be to ensure that the accuracy is there based on, you know, the information you're showing on the screen. Yeah, ab absolutely. And here again, um, to your point, granular. And we can click on individual dimensions. We can see which which surfaces or which edges they're measuring from. So so there's no confusion. I, I think if I were to draw a, a quick line, I'd say that the 3D PDF is great for individual parts. Um, obviously, we can bring assemblies in here as well. But the way that the way that we can highlight these different features and 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 really dive in and, and get an understanding of that individual part. I think works best for the 3D PDF. And then the JT with PDF, I think works best for assemblies because of that, that navigation that we saw there where you can see the whole structure.